Uh, in general parlance, a hypersonic vehicle is anything that travels at Mach 5 or above, that is five times the speed of sound. And as we know, Americans broke the sound barrier a long time ago, but there is a new sense of urgency because of claims by Russia and China to have hypersonic vehicles that could travel Mach 10 or even faster, too fast for us to shoot them down. One UNLV engineering professor was way ahead of the curve uh, a decade ago. He wrote a paper about this for a classified Pentagon program. The universe is full of surprises. Every day, chunks of space rock or other unknown objects slam into our atmosphere, traveling at hypersonic speeds. Often, we don't see them coming. In recent months, American adversaries, including Russia's Vlad Putin, have boasted of operational missile systems capable of hypersonic speeds, Mach 10 or more. That is 10 times the speed of sound so fast they can't be stopped or even tracked. I have no doubt that the Russians are able to make hypersonic missiles. Whether they actually are or not, I don't know. The U.S. is capable of making them also. UNLV's Dr. Bill Culbreth is not a newcomer to the wave of official interest in hypersonic tech. Culbreth, a rocket scientist and nuclear engineer, was tasked a decade ago with projecting into the future to identify challenges associated with detecting and tracking hypersonic vehicles or objects. His paper looked at the state of the art back then, speculated on technology that might be able to detect blazingly fast surprises, including foreign missiles. It was one of 38 papers commissioned by the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, to peer into the future of aerospace technologies, including ideas that, at the time, verged on sci-fi. Today, though, they don't sound so far out. We looked at, uh, at technology that, that people had envisioned that included chemical rockets, nuclear fission rockets, nuclear fusion rockets, antimatter, and... Um, even the possible use of rotating black holes in order to, to create uh, propulsion systems. And um, all, all these seemed very blue sky. At CERN right now, people are, are putting in little bottles uh, antimatter, anti-hydrogen. And antimatter is, is an extremely dense form of energy. And so we're, we're getting there. <laughs> Spooked by reports of Russian and Chinese hypersonic systems, the Pentagon and key congressional committees have launched what sounds like a new hypersonic arms race. Defense publications are abuzz with news about classified research programs. Nine different programs are reportedly underway within major defense contractors, including at least one prototype that could travel Mach 20, more than 11,000 miles per hour. Culbreth's paper addressed the difficulties of tracking anything that fast, and now reports indicate his suggestions are being heeded. One program already funded would ring the planet with a system of early warning sensors to look for anything that travels faster than Superman. An even bigger challenge, Culbra says, is building something that could defend against a hard-to-hit hypersonic object. The typical defense technique that's used now is to hit a missile with a missile. That's the purpose of the Patriot missile, uh, anti-missile batteries. In order to do that, you have to have a missile that can travel much faster than the target. And as hypersonic missiles that can deliver uh, weapons become more prevalent, it's going to be more and more difficult to make things that can shoot them down. At UNLV, Culbreth and colleagues have already pondered a related challenge. What materials can be used to make hypersonic craft, since even titanium melts at less than Mach 6? Yeah, if for, uh, we have groups that are working on composite materials. We always have groups that are working on novel materials. Dr. Colbreth's paper was originally written for a classified defense program, but the paper itself was never classified. It was read by Defense Department officials, by intelligence agencies, and by Pentagon contractors, but not the general public, not until now.